Good morning. Thank you for the nice introduction. <clears throat> we'll be talking about uh, esophageal and stomach disorders. So the objectives will be talking about esophagitis, motility disorders of the esophagus, eosinophilic esophagitis strictures, and also talk about Barrett's esophagus. For the stomach, we'll focus on gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, and also talk about hiatal hernias. So to start out with uh, candida esophagitis, so this um, would present with symptoms of retrosternal adenophagia generally. Sometimes patients will report some dysphagia as well. And on an endoscopy, you would expect to see some white mucosal plaques like lesions, and then biopsies would confirm the presence of yeast and um, candida. So management for this, it's always important to evaluate why the patient may have candida in the esophagus. Do they have diabetes that's poorly controlled? Have they had recent antibiotic use? Are they on steroids, um, even intranasal steroids, steroid inhalers, um, or are they immunosuppressed? So it would be important to consider the possibility of, of maybe doing some HIV testing as well for patients. Treatment then, my general approach for patients is <clears throat> Oftentimes, patients are asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic, so I might treat them with micelex troches, and this would be something that they could take um, generally five times a day for a few weeks. Um, you also could consider fluconazole, but you have to consider the possible interactions with other medications and the risks associated with the fluconazole. A uh, nice statin liquid would also be an option as well. Pill esophagitis would um, occur from direct mucosal damage, and we have certain medications that would uh, put a patient at increased risk for pill esophagitis. So whenever I'm seeing a patient in my clinic, I always look through their medication list, uh, especially if I'm seeing them for dysphagia, of course, and if they're on iron, uh, tetracyclines, any NSAIDs, potassium, or bisphosphonates, I always want to touch on the topic of this. Could they perhaps be switched to an IV bisphosphonate or um, taking a chewable aspirin instead of um, taking it in the pill form? Because if these medications were to get stuck in the esophagus and dwell in the esophagus for a period of time and then dissolve in the esophageal lining, then they could cause um, an ulcer. Um, so again, iron, I would generally try to switch that to liquid iron if possible. So the risk factors for this would be not taking enough liquid with their pills, taking multiple pills at a time, lying down after taking pills, and taking pills right before bed. So generally, you'd expect patients to present with acute adenophagia and retrosternal pain. And on endoscopy, you would see a discrete ulcer with normal surrounding mucosa. Management is most of these heal spontaneously. This is um, often something that occurs and patients don't even seek care for this um, because it generally will heal prior to that. Um, but if you can, again, it's important to stop the offending medication if possible. Um, change to a liquid formulation, as I mentioned. Carafate can be used to manage symptoms and to help the ulcer heal. It's important to drink water with pills and, and always to not be taking medications 30 minutes before lying down, whether that be during, before a nap during the day or at, at bedtime. Moving on to gastroesophageal reflux disease, this is commonly seen in the outpatient setting. And really what this is is a reflux of stomach contents that causes troublesome symptoms. So it's really important to clarify with patients what they mean by GERD or indigestion um, or heartburn symptoms because heartburn really is epigastric burning that ascends and is on the midline. So patients that are reporting burning off to the side uh, on one side or the other of the chest or just burning that occurs just in the epigastric area, that's really not specific for GERD. Regurgitation then would be the flow of contents up into the esophagus. Some patients may report a bad taste or just a feeling of coolness um, with those episodes as well. And then we get into the possible extraesophageal symptoms that may or may not be related to gastroesophageal reflux disease, such as chest pain, cough, throat clearing, sore throat, hoarseness, or globus, which is a feeling like there's a constant lump in the throat. <clears> throat> 